All right, now since we went and checked the database, we have the records inserted and everything is fine. If we click on customer again, here is my customer table and here is my users table. Now notice here, these are, it looks plain, right? You can expand these, you can make them smaller, you can change the design, all of this can be done. For example, if I go back to my form, but let me show you one thing before we do that. Let me delete, let's, let's run it again, I'll show you how the delete works. And then we go on to the end, we go to record six, and then hit the enter. And then I want to delete that record that I inserted at the end, so I just simply do what? Click on delete. Now, it doesn't give you any confirmation. It says, are you sure you want to delete? It doesn't do that, okay? So what we want to do later on in this course, I'll show you how we say, are you sure you want to delete? Then we delete it, okay? Uh, if you click on cancel, it doesn't delete. If you click on delete, it will delete. All right. Let's look at the design and go to customer form. And I was telling you, I was telling you, first of all, we have few things in here. Where did these things come from? These are the column headings in your database. So whatever column heading do you have or description of the column heading will be listed in here. Okay. Also these are text boxes. Same as we do drag and drop a text box. So I can, it has properties, I can make it smaller, I can make it bigger if I want. All of these can be done. Even the labels here, I can change them, so it will be my own labels, right? But if you do it properly in your database, this, you don't have to mess with these things. You, you, you have the proper description of these, then it'll come, you know, you don't have to rechange it, change it again. Let's take a look at the property of these fields. First of all, what is it? It's a text box. What's the name of that text box? Name dot text box, right? And it has text property, nothing, right? But it has this thing, right? Do you see that little arrow, the little yellow thing? What does that say? It is actually the information coming, what, from where? Table, customer, binding source, name, all right? That means the information that will be filled in that field is coming from somewhere in the database. It's called table, customer binding source. Let me show you where that is. If you go to the top, you have data binding in here. Let me make that a little bit bigger. You have data bindings, right? The, if you click on the data bindings, it should say, if you click on the data bindings, do you see that arrow? Yeah? One of the options here, let me just make that a little bit bigger so you can see. So here it's telling you the text is coming from this source. If you click on that and drag, you see the field names? Where did these come from? From the database. You got the idea? And what is the name of that? It's called custom underscore customer binding source, customer ta table underscore customer binding source. So this binding source is kind of like a connection between your application and the database. So what's happening here is that in your application you have this middle bridge, you want to call it. It gets the data from the database, connects it with your application and map it to the field that you select. So if I want a different name field, I will select a different name field and it will be mapped to that field. But we don't want to mess with that because this is the name. It should be connected to the name. Is that clear? Yeah. This, that, uh, we'll come back to that later on. Okay. This is important, critical. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at these things that we have at the bottom. We have, this is the customer data set. Customer data set. This is the table, remember I was telling you about the binding source? Here is the binding source, yeah? The one it got created for us, which, which is the bridge between the application and what? Uh, the database, okay? And there is one more thing, which is the data table adapter, which we will talk in more details. This requires 
a lot more discussion, so we'll get to it later on. The last thing that we have, we have the table adapter manager, but the one of the things that I want to talk about is the customer binding navigator. What is that? This is this here on top. Okay? All right, so that we will get back to the, we will discuss this in more details later on. But let's take a look at the form, what happens inside the form. When we double click on this, you'll see that there is code inserted for us. One of the things that inserted for us is that when you load the form, when you have, when you start your form the first time, this is what happens. Customer form load, which means that when the form is loaded into memory and then it's displayed to you, the first thing happened before it's displayed to you, this is what happens. Table or this, table, customer table, adapter. Have you seen this before? If you go back to that, where's that thing? Table adapter. What? That fill? Have you seen that before? Where's that fill? Coming from where? From? If you go back in here, look in here. Remember when I was talking about these? Each one has a method called fill. So now I am running basically a query. I'm saying run this query. What is the name of this query? Fill. You got the idea? So if I want to create another query, I will give it a different name and I can run it the same way. All right. Let's go back to the code. So, um, so what's happening is that it says, okay, run the query and put the result in and pass to it this parameter. Okay, the customer table dot customer, data set dot customer. Okay, so we're running a query against this table. Now, if we go up here, another thing that was inserted for us, which is what? Table customer binding navigation, the navigator. Do you remember when we saw that? What do you do in here? Save item. So when you click on the save item, this is what happens. What happens in here? It says this, the validate, table customer binding source. First of all, we run this method to validate the data. We end the editing and then we commit the changes to the database, which is the update all. All right. So if I don't do this, if I comment this out and I up change the record, do you think something will, uh, does it take effect? It does not take effect. Because I come, uh, I un uh, I'm not doing anything against the database. All I'm doing, okay, validate and then stop editing. But it does not commit the changes. All right? Is that clear? It's important that you understand these when we get started to understand these uh, concepts. Because when you build, when you start you can build on it. If you have a problem here, you cannot really understand later on how, what we're going to do. All right? So that would be the first video on how to create a database connection to a database and then bring in the data to, the, uh, to your application. The next part that I'll show you how we create a custom query and maybe do some searching. Okay, using the same technique, okay? So let's stop this and I'll give you a break.